Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com, setting the record straight about climate. The title of this video is Zombie Climate Science. I'm going to show in more detail how NOAA uses fake temperature data to create an imaginary warming trend in the United States. All of the graphs I'm going to show you in this video were made with data which was taken directly off of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration website. The United States Historical Climatology Network is by far the best long-term temperature record in the world. It shows that daily maximum temperatures last year in the United States were second lowest on record, tied with 1912. The only year with lower afternoon temperatures than last year was 1993, when the skies were darkened with ash from the eruption of Mount Pinatubo in the Philippines. U.S. afternoon temperatures peaked in the 1920s, 1930s, 1940s, and 1950s and have been much cooler over the past 60 years. But NOAA doesn't release graphs of the actual temperature data. Instead, they release graphs of altered temperature data, which they call adjusted. Their graphs show a warming trend with recent afternoon temperatures the hottest on record in the United States. But the actual thermometer data shows that recent decades have been among the coolest on record, with last year the second coolest on record. Now let's explore in more detail how they generated this fraudulent graph. NOAA generates four different data sets for the United States Historical Climatology Network. This graph, which I generated, shows the data from three of them. Blue shows daily maximum temperatures. Green shows raw monthly maximum temperatures, and red shows their final adjusted monthly temperatures. You can see that their daily and raw monthly temperature data sets are very similar. The daily and raw monthly data sets represent the actual thermometer data. But their final adjusted data set, shown in red, bears very little resemblance to the thermometer data. This graph shows NOAA's three different monthly temperature data sets. Blue is the raw thermometer data, green is the time of observation bias adjusted data, and red is their final adjusted data. Each set of adjustments cools the past more and warms the present more, thus increasing the warming trend. This graph shows the total adjustments to the U.S. temperature record done by NOAA. Temperatures prior to the year 1980 were generally adjusted down between 1.0 and 1.5 degrees Fahrenheit. But since the year 1980, there's been a hockey stick of upwards adjustments, and in 2018, temperatures were adjusted upwards by almost 1 degree Fahrenheit. So the total upwards adjustment over the past century is an incredible 2.5 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's how they create the fake warming trend, by tampering with the data. This graph shows the different stages of adjustment. The blue line is the time of observation bias adjustment. Temperatures from 100 years ago are cooled about 0.7 degrees Fahrenheit, and recent temperatures are cooled about 0.2 degrees Fahrenheit. So time of observation bias adjustments account for about 0.5 degrees Fahrenheit warming over the past century. These time of observation bias adjustments are relatively small. The big adjustments occur in the final adjustment data set. The pink line shows the difference between the final adjustment and the time of observation bias adjustment. You can see that there's a giant hockey stick after the year 1980. The total adjustments are shown in red, and once again you can see this post-1980 hockey stick. If we go back to the published NOAA temperature graph, this sharp rise in temperatures after 1980 is due entirely to this data tampering. Now let's look in more detail at what they're doing to create this post-1980 hockey stick. This graph shows the number of reporting stations in the United States Historical Climatology Network since the year 1895. At the beginning of the 20th century, there were about 600 stations. This more than doubled by the end of the 1980s and has dropped off sharply since then. NOAA has lost more than 400 stations over the last 30 years. But the fact that they have no thermometer readings from these 400 stations doesn't stop them from creating imaginary temperature data for those stations. Anthony Watts called these dead but reporting stations zombie stations. The percent of zombie stations has increased from less than 5 in the year 1990 to more than 35 percent now. And besides the zombie stations which report no data for the entire year, other stations are missing particular months. More than 40 percent of the final temperature data which NOAA uses is now imaginary data created from computer models rather than read from thermometers. I've marked on this graph of the daily temperature data the temperatures reported from these zombie stations. 
The thermometer data showed that last year's maximum temperatures were second lowest on record, but the zombie stations were quite hot. They were about two degrees warmer than the actual thermometer data. When NOAA is fabricating data, they can produce any temperature they want. And the climate modelers at NOAA want to show warming, so they create fake hot temperature data. It would be easy to jump to the conclusion that this post-1980 hockey stick was due entirely to zombie data. So I did some experiments to test this idea out. I generated graphs for only the set of stations which were active in both 1919 and 2019. Theoretically, there should be no zombie data in 2019 because all of the stations used reported data in 2019. This data set of maximum temperature shows the same thing as the set of entire stations. There's been a cooling trend in the United States over the past century, with the 1930s and 1950s much hotter. It shows last year very cool in the United States, but it does not show it as being second lowest. It is similar to the set of all stations, but not identical. And this graph shows the percent of zombie stations in that data set. The percentages of zombie stations are much smaller, but they're still there. Last year had about 8% zombie stations. All of the stations reported data in 2019, so I don't understand why there's any zombie stations from last year. NOAA appears to be throwing out perfectly good data. Remember though that it's not just zombie stations which have fabricated data. Many other stations have fabricated data for certain months of the year. This graph shows the percent of fabricated data from that set of stations. Last year had 15% fabricated data, which is quite high, but it's much less than the 40% which we saw for the set of all stations. So this is a better data set to work with and should have smaller adjustments than the set of all stations. Now let's look at the adjustments for just that set of stations. The raw data, which we've already seen, shows cooling. The time of observation bias adjusted data shows no trend. And the final adjusted data shows a strong warming trend with a post-1980 hockey stick evident. This graph shows the total adjustments being done. The post-1980 hockey stick is nearly as large as it was for the set of all stations. And this graph shows the difference between the final adjusted data and the time of observation bias adjusted data. Once again, there's a large post-1980 hockey stick. There should have been very few or no zombie stations in this database, but they're still there and we still have this hockey stick of data tampering after 1980. The NOAA US temperature data has nothing to do with reality. They're doing something in these final adjustments which creates a hockey stick which does not exist in the actual thermometer data. This graph shows the adjustments for the average temperature data, which is the average of the maximum and the minimum temperatures. And this graph shows carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere over the same time period. Note the similarity in the shape of the carbon dioxide graph and the shape of the temperature adjustment graph. I noticed this about 10 years ago that the adjustment graph and the carbon dioxide graph were nearly identical. So in this graph I plotted carbon dioxide levels along the x-axis and NOAA adjustments along the y-axis. You can see that there's extremely good correlation between the carbon dioxide levels and the adjustments. What this shows is that the data is being altered to match carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere. This is the ultimate in junk science. They're altering the data to match their carbon dioxide warming theory. In real science, you alter your theory to match the data. But in climate science, they do the exact opposite. And the data fraud they're committing ripples all the way through climate science. Here's another graph from NOAA, share of U.S. land with unusually high summer temperatures. Unusually hot summers are defined based on daily maximum temperatures. This graph shows that the percent of the U.S. affected by unusually hot daily summer maximum temperatures has increased sharply since 1980 and is now at record highs. It's the same imaginary spike in temperature since 1980 which we saw in the adjusted NOAA temperature graphs. But this increase since 1980 didn't actually occur in the real world. It didn't show up in the National Climate Assessment. The National Climate Assessment heat wave graph showed that heat waves were much worse in the United States from 1900 through the 1950s than they have been over the last 60 years. The percent of U.S. stations which reached 90 degrees sometime during the year has declined over the past century. There's been no increase since 1980. Rather, there's been a decrease. It's the same story for the percent of the U.S. which reached 95 degrees Fahrenheit or 35 degrees Celsius sometime during the year. That percentage has declined sharply over the last century. 
There's been no indication of an increase since 1980. Rather, there's been a fairly sharp decrease. And it's exactly the same story for the percent of U.S. stations which reach 100 degrees sometime during the year. That percent has dropped by more than 50% since the 1930s. This increase since 1980 is due entirely to scientific fraud at NOAA. Afternoon summer temperatures are unequivocally getting cooler in the United States. They're not getting warmer. I've been pointing this out for years and the press is well aware of my claims, but they refuse to talk to me. Instead, they talk to fraudsters like John Cook at Skeptical Science who will tell them the story which they want to hear. Here's a new article from CBS News, 10 Common Myths About Climate Change, What Science Really Says. Science doesn't speak, but what members of the press do is they speak to the same group of climate fraudsters over and over again. Myth number seven, the temperature record is rigged or unreliable. A common talking point among climate change skeptics is either the temperature record is unreliable or the temperature record is rigged. That might be a plausible argument if all of science relied on just one or two records. However, there are many independent temperature records produced by various independent bodies worldwide, and their data are remarkably consistent with each other. These organizations include NASA, NOAA, the UK Met Office, the Japanese Meteorological Service, and the European Center for Medium Range Weather Forecasts, just to name a few. One of the variables they have to account for is a phenomenon called the urban heat island effect. Simply put, large cities which are expanding heat up the local atmosphere due to the concentration of dark surfaces, buildings, and industries releasing heat. The concern is that this extra heat may contaminate surface temperature trends. Scientists have studied this phenomena thoroughly and the surprising conclusion is that the warming trend in the temperature record of urban sites in general is similar to rural sites. So the urban heat island effect is real but not very substantial. Whenever you see a journalist use the term scientists say, you can be pretty sure that they're lying to you. This graph from the National Weather Service shows the urban heat island effect in Phoenix. The red dots are the urban temperatures and the blue dots are the rural temperatures. They've sharply diverged since 1960. If you listen to the weather forecast for just about any city in the world, they will say that nighttime low temperatures will be considerably lower outside the city than they are in the city center. This is due to the urban heat island effect, which is very well understood and very well documented. But the press thinks they can get away with these lies by attaching the words scientists say. Let's look at what scientists actually published. This paper was from Tom Carl at NOAA and Phil Jones at the University of East Anglia, who were considered the two leading experts in their respective countries. They said that the urban heat island effect in the United States was as large or larger than the overall temperature trend. In other words, the entire warming trend in the United States in 1989 was due to urban heat island effects. The author of the CBS News article was misinforming the readers. He also claimed that the data sets from different countries were independent. But ClimateGate emails showed the exact opposite. People from different agencies in different countries colluded to tamper with the temperature data and come up with a common appearing graph. From Tom Wigley at NCAR to Phil Jones at the University of East Anglia, copying Ben Santer at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratories. If we could reduce the ocean blip by, say, 0.15 degrees Celsius, then this would be significant for the global mean, but we'd still have to explain the land blip. It would be good to remove at least part of the 1940s blip, but we are still left with why the blip. These scientists from different agencies colluded to alter the temperature data, and they didn't even have an explanation for why they were doing it. In 2016, Senator Malcolm Roberts from Queensland sent a letter to Gavin Schmidt at NASA asking him why they were altering Iceland's temperature data. NASA had altered their data to remove this for a warm period during the 1940s. They made it completely disappear. This is exactly what the scientists wrote about in that climate gate email. They made the 1940s blip disappear. And they didn't even have an explanation for why they were doing this data tampering. Gavin Schmidt responded by disavowing the temperature data. He said that the NASA temperature data actually came from NOAA. And NOAA is the agency which is doing this data tampering. There's nothing independent or honest about these different data sets. They all come from the same source and they're all fake. CBS News won't talk to me. Instead, they talk to a small group of academics who will reliably give them the misinformation which they want to print. One of them is Catherine Hayhoe, who is a political science professor at Texas Tech University. She makes her living and gets to hang out with the rich and powerful by telling lies about the climate. Another favor of the press is Michael Mann from Penn State University, who is one of the worst scientists who ever lived. 
He was described by his colleagues as a disgrace to the profession. And then this junk science gets propagated into policy decisions. A judge in London just blocked the needed third runway at Heathrow Airport because he said it was going to ruin the climate. It's just a matter of time until climate alarmists attempt to destroy everything we depend on for our civilization. And it's all based on junk science and fraud being delivered by a very small group of people in government agencies. If the press would talk to me, I could explain this to them in a matter of minutes, which is exactly why they won't talk to me. They're afraid to talk to me because my message is compelling and it's very easy to understand. So that's why I make these videos. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and pass my videos around to as many people as possible. And of course, visit Toto on the web at realclimatescience.com. He's been pulling back the curtain on junk science and propaganda for a long time.